you today um, about several things. Um, I'm going to start with just framing a little bit about the Inclusion and Diversity Committee and the work that this committee has done over the past several years. So aligned with CCCI's mission, um, the Inclusion and Diversity Committee rep made up of representation um, across the different nodes um, here in the Commonwealth with, within CCI um, is really focused on trying to help CCCI continue to do everything that it's been charged to do, um, but think about the importance of inclusion and diversity and, and how this um, very important uh, initiative and the nodes um, can really do a lot of wonderful things to advance inclusion and diversity through cybersecurity discussions and research and opportunity. Um, and, and that's all highly important. So uh, our committee has worked for several years trying to organize webinars, information sessions, and provide guidance to CCCI leadership. Um, just to give them that important perspective about inclusion and diversity and how you can utilize inclusion and diversity to continue to advance um, your mission. Um, and so I'm joined by several colleagues that sit on this committee. Um, we've had uh, different members coming in and out um, that have been working. I know several of you watching this session today um, attended other webinars that the CCCI Inclusion and Diversity Committee organized such as um, info sessions featuring um, Wayne Scales, um, talking about the importance of partnering where possible with historically black colleges and universities in this work. Uh, we had a few other sessions as well, um, including some featured by leaders in diversity, equity, and inclusion like Dr. Gloria Ladson Billings um, and our own Jordan Mason, um, who did an important webinar for us about increasing diversity in cybersecurity programs. So this, the, that's the main work of that committee. And I want to invite you to consider joining this important committee. Um, right now, we are looking for more members. And you can read about and even go forward and apply to be a member of the Inclusion and Diversity Committee by going to CCCI's website, cyberinitiative.org, and then look under diversity at CCI. Uh, we currently are looking for more individuals to join our committee. You can read about our charter as a committee, what we do, and um, you can submit your name along with some additional information if you'd like to be considered. We would love to have some more representation on this committee. And so I invite you to do that to respond to the call for members. During today's webinar, as we get ready to dive into some of the specifics about a new RFP and hear from uh, Louise, our fearless director, hardworking, I just want to remind you of some housekeeping items. Please use the Q&A feature in today's webinar to ask questions. Um, and we'll make sure that when we get to that portion of today's webinar, that we do our best to answer your questions about the RFPs the RFP, and we'll get into um, some of the specifics there. Um, so once again, my name's Nate, happy to be here. I want to invite and now welcome Luis Da Silva uh, to take over next, give you a little bit of an overview again about the exciting mission and work of CCI, and then we'll talk about this new call for uh, proposals. Luis, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Nate, uh, and welcome everyone and good afternoon. Um, I'm going to say a few words about CCI, especially for those of you who have not engaged uh, previously uh, with the organization. Uh, and then I'll go over some elements of the call for proposals uh, that we're talking about today. Um, and then of course, there'll be time for any questions that you all may have. So let me share my screen to get started. Um, and by the way, this session is being recorded, so uh, we can make it available um, for your reference and for those who are not able to be here uh, with us um, in real time. So um, <clears throat> the main topic today, of course, is this call for proposals um, called Addressing Inclusion and Accessibility in Cybersecurity. Um, I must say that the, the call and the whole idea of having a research program around it, um, it comes from 
the Inclusion and Diversity Committee uh, that Nate leads. Um, so I'd like to thank Nate for this work, as well as Michelle McDonald, uh, Jen Allen, uh, and Jordan Mason, um, who really did all the, the background work to create the call. Uh, and we'll do so much more in terms of uh, helping us in our mission uh, around inclusion and diversity in, in cybersecurity. So um, for those of you who are not um, very familiar with CCI, um, we started around four years ago. Um, we are uh, an initiative funded by the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, and we were given three missions. So research, innovation, and workforce development around cybersecurity. Um, a lot of it is driven by uh, the need for more cybersecurity professionals throughout the Commonwealth. Um, the opportunities that we have to um, keep expanding research uh, in, in this area throughout the entire state and to transition the results of some of those uh, research projects into innovation, to startups and, um, and, and new commercializable intellectual property. So our vision uh, is to make Virginia a, a globally recognized leader in cybersecurity. Uh, it's, it's a big goal, but I think it's an achievable one. We have a lot of talent and a lot of resources throughout the entire Commonwealth. Um, we're now more than 40 institutions of higher education, uh, and you can see their names uh, on the map. Um, about 375 uh, researchers, not including students, so um, so faculty members um, involved in this. And uh, we're constantly expanding the, the set of people involved in our program. So we hope that with this call, um, we are even going to have some additional uh, faculty and students uh, engaging in CCI. So um, I'm going to summarize some elements of the call. Um, there's going to be a link to the call itself on our website. Uh, that is the ultimate source for information uh, about this call for proposals. In this particular call, uh, we view it as primarily aligned with our research mission. So I mentioned three mission lines, research, innovation, workforce development. In research, what we do is we provide seed grants so that we build capacity within um, the Commonwealth uh, on a particular research topic, uh, and then um, seed some work that will then be expanded through extramural funding. Uh, so that's what this call ultimately um, aims to do. So uh, it provides seed grants to advance research uh, on uh, inclusion and accessibility in cybersecurity technology. And we'll give you a couple of examples um, of the kinds of things that we have in mind, but uh, of course, we're going to rely on your creativity and, uh, and expertise um, to actually propose uh, specific topics of research within the call. Um, and so a seed grants really trying to build capacity. So make sure that we have uh, enough uh, expertise and, and uh, a seed um, um, work in, on a particular topic uh, that could lead to a much larger opportunity. So uh, we want our researchers to then build on this to obtain um, larger uh, externally funded grants. So um, um, we see the research mission as basically seeding our ability to bring in a lot more research capacity into Virginia. Um, so not just to do the research, use the money just to do research to advance, um, the, the area, but also to be able to uh, leverage uh, that initial research into something bigger. So as part of the grant proposal, we do expect to see um, concrete plans for how you leverage the initial grant to obtain additional external funding. And that could come from the federal government, could come from the private sector. Um, philanthropic organizations, I think on this topic, uh, there could be an opportunity to um, to increase our engagement with the foundations, for example. Uh, and then, of course, uh, they can impact uh, CCI's mission of innovation and workforce development in cybersecurity. But just to emphasize again, this is we view this as a research call. So um, really, the primary 
uh, objective is to identify research topics and advance them at the intersection of inclusion and accessibility and cybersecurity. Let me advance the slides. Whoops, and too far. Okay. So uh, this comes directly from uh, the website and the call on the web. Um, the objectives that we uh, set out for the program uh, are one, to produce seminal contributions uh, on uh, cybersecurity research that address inclusion, accessibility, and diversity issues that are specifically related to cybersecurity technology. Um, another objective is to use this seed funding to um, build on um, this initial work to increase the project's impact uh, through, for example, additional funding from federal agencies, uh, fund foundations, and private sector. Um, it's almost always a byproduct of these research pro uh, projects that we contribute to workforce development. Usually, um, these projects involve faculty and students throughout Virginia. Um, and I think there's an opportunity here for uh, for that sort of uh, contribution with cross-disciplinary domain knowledge. I think this kind of topic where we look at the intersection of cybersecurity technology and inclusion and accessibility um, is well suited for a transdisciplinary approach. Um, and then um, possibly to explore opportunities for innovation, meaning commercialization, entrepreneurship, um, startups, spin-outs, and so on. Um, again, at the intersection of security and accessibility and inclusion. Some general comments. Um, so we are really looking for research topics. Um, so we gave some examples, for example, how to make um, uh, digital protection systems uh, accessible to um, broader uh, you know, segments of the population, um, to look at uh, some vulnerable po populations that are specifically targeted in cyber attacks or specifically vulnerable to cyber attacks, um, addressing bias issues in artificial intelligence, for example, uh, bias regarding the gender or skin tone, um, making sure that cybersecurity mechanisms uh, are usable by persons with disabilities or persons with different social and economic backgrounds. Uh, these are just a few examples that uh, came to our mind, but again, this is not um, you know, com comprehensive. Uh, I'm sure you all will have uh, your own ideas about uh, topics that live within cybersecurity uh, and, um, and specifically have to do with inclusion and accessibility. This is really not about how to include, to increase the diversity of the cybersecurity workforce. So that is not our primary goal. And so uh, uh, increasing the diversity of um, uh, the cybersecurity workforce is an explicit goal of CCI, but that's not what this particular call is targeting. Um, we have calls on experiential learning, for example, um, that would be more aligned with our workforce development mission. Um, so this is really a research call. Um, multidisciplinary approaches, so for example, uh, someone from the STEM side, partnering with someone from the social sciences, the humanities, law, etc., are encouraged because we thought that uh, this would be a natural for, for the topic. Um, it's not mandated, so um, it's not a requirement of the call that you have a multidisciplinary team. Um, we very much welcome applications for from groups that are underrepresented in cybersecurity, uh, as well as applications for uh, from researchers who have not previously engaged with CCI. So um, we have taken a very transdisciplinary approach to what cybersecurity means in CCI. So we have researchers from uh, a broad array of disciplines, and with this call, we would like to even you know try to expand that. Um, that community of uh, researchers engaged in cybersecurity topics. Um, the essential rules of the game are uh, described in the call for proposals in a lot more detail. Uh, some of uh, these come from um, 
the limitations on the funding that we receive from from the state. So uh, there are some some rules about how we can spend um, those funds. So um, generally, the eligibility is any researcher, any faculty member at public institutions in the CCI network. So more than forty five. Um, participants in the network who are deemed el eligible by their home institution to serve as a principal investigator on an external grant. So we rely on the definitions that your institution uses um, of who can apply for um, funding as a principal investigator on an external grant. Um, for this call, the maximum award is um, $50,000 period of performance over one year. Um, and by the way, there, there's no indirect um, on this. So the 50K are all for direct costs. Uh, it is one of the rules of the way that we got funded that um, <clears throat> we cannot pay for indirect costs. So all the, uh, the universities that have been funded under CCI calls uh, in the last few years are well aware of that. And um, everyone has, has agreed to that. Um, now, the details about what the proposal looks like uh, and a little bit more about some kinds of things that we can and cannot fund um, can be found in the call, which is on our website. And, and that's a link, but uh, if you don't want to remember the link, just remember cyberinitiative.org, uh, go there, and then on the menu, <laughs> there is a place for calls for proposals. So it should be pretty easy to find. Um, <clears throat> some dates, uh, and then I'll, I'll stop uh, and take any questions that you all may have. Um, we have a, um, an email address that you can uh, use for any questions that you have about the call. Uh, we'll be taking questions until the 16th of February. Um, and so please use that email address because that's a way for us to keep track uh, of any questions about the call. Uh, the proposals themselves are due on the 1st of March. Um, we target an award not notification by the 1st of May. Uh, and then the period of performance from the time of the award notification to um, the end of May 2025. Um, so this is going to primarily take place during fiscal year 25. And then we need uh, the, to, to report the outcomes um, by the end of May. Um, again, if you go to the call for proposals website, uh, there'll be a little bit more detail about uh, what is required uh, from you for um, reporting back um, the results of the call. Uh, and each proposal gets peer reviewed. So um, we will um, have three reviews per proposal. The comments that are offered by the reviewers then are sent back to the proposer. Uh, both for the successful and the unsuccessful grants, uh, grant proposals. Um, we may call upon you to uh, to serve as a reviewer if you don't submit to the to the call. Um, we deconflict reviews so that no one uh, will review for their own institution and so on. But um, so we try to turn it around pretty quickly. Uh, so within two months um, for the entire process of so peer review and then. Uh, selection of, of the proposals that are going to be funded. This is all I had, um, I believe. So yeah, so I'm going to just open the floor for questions. Um, again, as Nate mentioned, please use the Q&A um, to, to, uh, <laughs> to ask any questions. And again, thank you so much for, for coming today. We have 28 people um, by my count. So this is a great turnout. Uh, I'm sure others will have access to uh, the recorded version of this webinar. So thank you, Luis, for um, for giving us the information and the overview about this initiative. We're just so excited about it. I, I mean, I just think um, this aspect of conducting research and thinking about. Uh, the intersection of diversity and inclusion in a lot of the ways that you raise just creates a, a great opportunity. Um, so I appreciate that on behalf of the Inclusion and Diversity Committee. Yeah, and we see this, this is a, a big opportunity for us to actually establish a leadership in Virginia. 
uh, on treating these uh, these questions, right? So uh, these are really important questions. Um, there is some work going on uh, on on some of those, um, but I think if we get known for uh, for being a group of researchers that actually look into this sort of research uh, challenge, uh, I think this can be extremely beneficial in terms of positioning the state as a leader in cybersecurity. So it looks like we've got one question, Louise. Um, are PIs able to have co-PIs who are not members of a Virginia college or university? Yeah, that's a great question, right? So, um, so normally uh, we are limited to having PIs and co-PIs that are from um, from the network uh, and from specifically the public institutions in the CCI network, and that's a requirement of our funding. Now, though, there are only um, kind of a caveat there is that, that you could have uh, in your proposal you could have a sub award um, as long as it's uh, something. That's that's not a major part of the funding uh, that could go to another institution that's not within CCI. Um, this we need to be very careful with this and, and limiting this uh, uh, the, the amounts. But uh, if if there's some kind of expertise and it's a small part of the proposal um, that lends itself to a sub award, that could be considered. Great. We have another question. Um... Are proposals that address content moderation on social media, for example, hate speech, toxic content, welcome in this solicitation? Oh, that's uh, that's really a good question. And so um, I think yes, as long as the, it's clear that there is this connection both to cybersecurity and to inclusion and accessibility. Uh, and so uh, a few years ago, we had a call for research proposals looking at disinformation and misinformation as a cybersecurity issue. And I think that was quite successful. So it sounds like this idea would be in the same kind of general bucket, right? Uh, and we, we know that some of uh, the hate speech is directed at um, vulnerable populations, at minorities, and so on. So uh, if there is a clear connection to the, the core of the topic, which is cybersecurity and inclusion and accessibility, uh, then it's certainly fair game. Perfect. Uh, how many proposals will be awarded? So we expect of the order of four proposals uh, to be awarded. Um, so that's the, the number that we uh, we have in mind. Um, it's never a very uh, hard number because it kind of depends on how many proposals we have and the quality of the proposal. So in the past, uh, there have been cases where we were able to to look for some additional funding uh, so that we could accommodate more. But uh, but we certainly have uh, set aside at least uh, enough funding for four proposals. Another question. It was mentioned that workforce is not the primary goal of this call, but can it nonetheless be a major focus of the research? Um, yeah, I think... Um, it it can it depends. I'd have to to look uh, at the the content of the idea, uh, and not not just me, but the reviewers, right? So um, the first thing that the reviewers will be asked is, uh, does this proposal align with the stated objectives of the call? Um, so, and the stated objective is really research on inclusion and accessibility as it pertains to cybersecurity technologies. Um, so. Uh, in my view, if, uh, say, uh, research on um, what is the composition of the cybersecurity workforce, to me, that does not uh, align with the, with the call. Um, <clears throat> but if, you, if it's a, a topic, and then as a, as a byproduct of uh, exploring that topic, um, there is impact in increasing the diversity of the cybersecurity workforce, then that would be uh, welcome. And so more than acceptable, uh, I think that would be very um, well received. Have another question, Louise. Why do we need to list external funders as part of this proposal? So um, the idea is not that you list your current uh, um, 
uh, external funders as part of the proposal itself, but that you articulate how uh, the seed grant is going to be leveraged to obtain additional funding, or um, you know there could be other other kinds of impact uh, that come from from the proposal. Um, because and the reason is we view the research mission as increasing our ability as a state to attract research funding. And so uh, it's a, a different mission from, say, the National Science Foundation that may have a mission of um, advancing the state of the art by itself is already good enough uh, as an outcome of a research project. But for from CCI's point of view, or from this, the Commonwealth's point of view, uh, the research mission is really about how do we uh, grow and um, strengthen our institutions in their ability to perform perform research. So this is a seed grant and a seed is seed for something, right? So, and so what we're asking for in the proposal is what do you view this as a seed for? All right, looks like oh, I'll oh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, I'm just going to throw out a couple of possible questions. Um, can individuals pay tuition fees with this grant? Yeah, that's a great question. So we are limited in our ability to pay um, tuition. Um, so we cannot, for example, offer scholarships. So this was explicitly um, disallowed when we got funded. Um, now, the one caveat that's an important one is that sometimes a graduate research assistant, which can be funded by the project, um, many institutions will offer as part of the graduate research assistantship um, to cover the tuition. In that case, we view tuition as part of the compensation uh, that's offered to the GRA, and that is allowed because we are allowed to compensate the GRA for the work that they do uh, towards research. Um, so if your institution um, considers that an integral part of a graduate research assistantship, that's the that's the only way that I've seen tuition actually being covered uh, through these grants. Thank you. Uh, Louise, I have a question too. Can a PI have a co-PI who is not a member of a Virginia college or a university? No, we wouldn't consider that person a co-PI. Um, so uh, they, they could be a participant as long as, well, they cannot be funded. Um, with the only possible exception is if there is a small subaward. In the past, we have allowed small subawards as part of the major award, uh, and they could go to, to an institution outside CCI, but they wouldn't be considered co-PI. Many reasons for that, and um, we um, you know, are reporting requirements and again, the requirements put upon us by the Commonwealth on how CCI funding can be used. Also, can a single researcher submit a proposal? Yes. So um, you could have a single PI proposal. Uh, as I mentioned before, we see this as an opportunity for multidisciplinary research, but it's not a requirement. So if there is a PI and there um expertise is sufficient to cover the topic then that's that's completely allowed and along the lines of transdisciplinary research why are you requesting or why are you strongly encouraging transdisciplinary teams for this call so we had we had a lot of conversations about that with the um, uh, inclusion and diversity committee so maybe the members of the committee can also pitch in uh, we just thought that this was a natural right so um because there, there is expertise that may be more in the STEM disciplines that uh, are typically part of cybersecurity uh, that could be well complemented with expertise that uh, resides in the humanities or in the social sciences. Um, and this would be kind of a, the kind of topic that would be natural for that. Um, but we decided to not mandate it. So, um, you know, if, uh, if there's a proposal and the reviewers uh, view the proposal as being strong in all the elements, then um, it's you know it won't be deducted points for not being multidisciplinary. 
but maybe Nate or Michelle or Jordan, uh, if you have your your perspective. I, on I, I would just echo, and then I'll let my colleagues do it as well. When we discuss this, we just recognize that when you have uh, diverse perspectives in the room together, working on a shared research goal, you just end up with better results by having diverse views, diverse perspectives, diverse expertise. And so one of the ways we wanted to operationalize that is encouraging that, that cross-disciplinary um, nature, right, in the work, because that's a great way to ensure that you've got that diverse representation, diversity of thought, diversity of background. Uh, we considered, of course, um, our knowledge as um, professionals in higher education about, well, if we really wanted to get diverse views, um, look at the benefit that comes from that by just signaling that it's encouraged to look across different disciplines and not just in one discipline where the demographics may look a particular way depending on your institution. So it was really in that spirit of diversity of thought. And um, that's where that came from. Jordan, Michelle, um, what would you say? I, I think you, uh, I think you hit that pretty much spot on. I would only make okay. it less eloquent if I tried to add. <laughs> um, we do have another question, um, and this is sort of uh, tacking on to the question about co-PIs. Um, can, co um, can co-PIs outside of Virginia be included on proposals if they are not funded? Um, yeah, so definitely they can be included. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them a co-PI, but, uh, but that's not super important because ultimately the PI is the only role that will have an administrative um, you know, requirement. So the, the grant will be made to the institution of the PI. So each proposal needs to have one primary principal investigator. That person needs to be in a CCI institution that's a public institution. And the grant will be made to that institution. So the money will be moved to that institution. And the PI uh, is the one who is going to have the formal resp responsibility to report uh, back to CCI and back to the state on the outcomes of this grant. So um, the co-PIs uh, then will, um, th those who are funded are going to be funded under uh, um, a, a secondary um, um, a subcontract uh, of the major contract. So, uh, so the institution of the PI is responsible for moving the money uh, to the co-PI. So if you list a co-PI who's not from Virginia, for example, and they're not funded, that's, that's perfectly fine. Uh, they're going to be bringing some of their expertise, some of their knowledge and contributing. Um, they just won't get any of the, of the funds um, from the seed grant. Oh, yeah. I'm not seeing anything else in the uh, in the Q and A. Okay, so if uh, there's nothing else, we'll we we'll wrap up. Um, let me say once again, I'm really excited about this call. Um, I think uh, you know similar calls that we've done in the past, for example, our cyber arts calls, um, ended up resulting in the most creative and interesting projects um, with with lots of impact uh, across research, but also innovation. Um, and I think this uh, is, is going to be a similar one. Uh, and I can't wait to see the ideas that you all propose. Uh, I also think it's going to expand our tent uh, and have more people that we can bring into CCI. So thank you so much for your interest. Um, you know, For those of you who have engaged with CCI before, for those of you who are new to CCI, uh, we really look forward to, to working with you. And let me thank again the members of the Inclusion and Diversity Committee of CCI for all their work uh, on this project. We're happy to do it. And, and thank you to those that uh, viewed this recording or joined us live. Again, you can read more about the call on the CCCI website. Um, look under inclusion and diversity, um, and you can find the call there. You can also find um, a way to submit your name um, if you would like to join our committee. 
um, and just continue some of this great work that we're doing. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, my fellow members, Jordan Mason. Jen Allen um, is also a member. We're looking to grow the committee and so excited about this call. Thank you, Louise. And thank you to everyone here with CCI and all of you watching or this recording live or in person. Have a wonderful day. Thanks.